right, guys, thank you for joining me again. This is Daniel the Adjuster, and we've got an exciting one for you today, Eagle View. Now, that sounds like a creature that's out there trying to get us. Or maybe you've seen that video on YouTube where they stuck a camera to the back of an eagle and said, let's follow you around and see what it did, does. Hey, get an eagle's view. No, that's not what eagle view is. Insurance adjusters use eagle view to get the measurements of a roof. And it's so cool. So let me show you guys. All right, so Eagle View, here's their website. No big deal, but look at this, it's really cool. They map it out, they do this thing for you. But hey, somebody had asked me a question and they said, hey, can you explain it and how it comes into Xactimate? Because it's uh, really uh, cool, like really cool. Otherwise you gotta draw it, okay? So let's go back over here. Check it out. Here's our uh, Xactimate and right up here when that Eagle View is ordered and how you order it, is either you pay for it or you convince the insurance carriers to pay for it. And that's what I always do. I always say, hey, can you order the Eagle View for me so I don't have to measure the roof? <laughs> if you sweet talk them along enough, they'll do it. So, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Some carriers will automatically order it for you because they want to make sure that the measurements are accurate and it actually makes it really easy for us because it imports it right into the to the sketch and I don't have to draw the roof. So when this claim comes in and you see this little icon up in the corner, that means that the Eagle View has been ordered and it has come in to Xactimate. So the quickest way to do it is just to click on that and it'll here they actually imported it twice, which is pretty famous for this carrier, they do it twice. You just click on whatever one you want, which it doesn't matter which one it is, and hit import. And in just a couple seconds, boom! <laughs> Here's that drawing, man. I didn't even have to draw this roof and it's all in there. Check it out. Each of the faces uh, are all measured out here. So I can bring this over here and read this a little better if I want to. I'm using my scroll button. All right, let's get this over here. So look at you. It'll tell you the pitch. So the slopes of each area. Okay, so F1, it's labeled, guys. So you zoom in close, you'll see F9, F8. You gonna see that or do I need to move it over? Okay, so those are the slopes and they are labeled. So if I said, okay, what is this slope right here? F6, I'm gonna zoom out and F6 is, go across, it's a 10, 12. So pretty, pretty cool. When this thing comes in, I already know what the slope is of this roof so I can see if I can climb it. Now, this is even cooler. You go down to your 3D button there and boom, I can quickly rotate and look around. Wow, I got a back porch, nice easy place to get onto. Nice easy place to get onto there if I want to. Even though it's a 1012, these are all 1012s, I got an easy slope here to get onto the back of the house. Uh, so if I wanted to put my ladder back there, I don't have to freak out getting onto a 1012. So that's really cool, okay? So you can check out the slope. Uh, pitch is there right before you even go out to the, uh, the house and make sure it's something you can climb. So really cool here is, is because this thing is imported, I, what I typically do is I like to highlight it all, control X, control paste, and then I like to tab it through and maybe I put it in the, in this area, like I only, I can still kind of odd the way they've located it here, but I like to put it to where the front of the house is down and you know, right here is the front as best as I can to make this, you know, make it look a little better so that I can always have my, my test square on the front, my left, my back and my right. Some guys will leave it like it is, twisted and all, and I just don't like that, so. You know, you do what you want, but this is just preference of what I do. I just move that out of the way because I don't need it. And then if I was annotating this, I go up in here, change my line color to red, check my rectangle, go ahead and put my test square. That's where I put it when I was on the roof. When I get on the roof and I find out where I do my test square, I have to annotate it. I have to tell them where it's gonna go. So I, I just draw that little square. It doesn't have to be exact, just giving them an idea where it is. Then I go Control C and control V puts my next square, control uh, V again does my next square, and control V does my next square. Then I just use my red arrows, point in the direction, use my text box, back, 
equals her back and dash and I do 10 plus hail damaged shingles. Oops, if I can spell, you know I'm really good for that. So I just put that back there, organize it nice and pretty, copy, paste, move it over here, double click on that to change the lettering, and I can go right, and then okay. Do it again, copy and paste, left. Okay, and see how fast I'm going, guys? You guys are gonna be able to do this in no time. It's just a matter of repetition. You just keep on doing it. You're gonna get faster and faster as you do it. Then you use your arrows, point to the front, hit the arrow again, point to the left, hit the arrow again, got the right. Okay, but it's really cool. So the reason why Eagle View is so awesome when it comes in, guys, is that down here, when I, when I go into my estimate line items, estimate line items, over here, Eagle View comes up. I normally change the second one because I want to go source Eagle View, source Eagle View. I change the right click it, edit, and I put dwelling. Okay, just, just put that as dwelling. And then I right click the R3 and change it to roof, just so it's nice and clean. And then guess what guys, those handy dandy macros that I'm selling, <laughs> if you want them, get them, because they make things so easy. Here it is, there's that macro button, macros, and maybe I'm doing an ASI roof at this point. ASI, uh, new three tab replace, double click, boom. Come on now, go fast. There it is, boy, it just takes forever. Then there's the macro. Every item that you need to put on a three tab roof is already boom in there in one click. Then I go through and see it's square. So there's 42 squares on that roof. That's a big roof. Okay, already got my waist in there. Already got my little description. It says roof shingle waist with 15% waist factor. Settle assist was not available. Well, that's actually for ASI, but I won't go into that. But anyway, so 10%, uh, your felt, pipe jacks, exhaust caps, your furnace vents, roof vents for your metal, your turtle vents versus the plastic or the metal. You got your universal starter co uh, course, your uh, ridge cap shingles and your ridge vent. It's all in there, guys. My macros, $49.99. I got like two or 300 of them in there. Makes things easy. I try to make things easy for you guys. <laughs> so anyway, so really cool. So I've now basically estimated that roof that quick. That's how it works. And I didn't have to draw it. Man, that's a tough roof to draw. There's lots of extras in there. Lots of these little, little cutouts or whatever. And then you pop your macros in, you write your report, you've done your estimate, you made your 300 bucks. Man, it's just, that's the way it is, guys. Things are fast when it comes to the adjuster world. You just gotta learn it to, at the beginning right. And once you learn it right, you're gonna fly through this, you're gonna be a pro. You're gonna be a pro. So, Daniel the Adjuster here, helping you become a pro. <laughs> See you on the next one. Bye-bye.